Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Last time I was working on the big swim bait, I told you guys I would do a subscriber Q&A next, and I also got a lot of questions on the, uh, the swim bait itself and what I was gonna do next and whether I would go ahead and put it on film, and uh, that's what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and answer questions and combine that with the modifications that I'm gonna try on, on this, uh, this swim bait to try to make it swim a little more naturally. Uh, it looks pretty good right now, but I think maybe we can do better. So before I go to the questions, let me just say thank you guys for the input and all the questions. And uh, I had asked you guys about what size hook to use on this thing. Um, I'm not really sure, but everyone seems to agree that a uh, number two treble is the way to go. I also asked a buddy of mine who's and who's a captain and does some uh, guiding what he thought and he also said a number two. So number two it is. So another kind of crucial question I should probably uh, uh, sort of uh, approach first is why why mess with the action? Uh, a lot of folks thought the action it has is, is just fine and actually the more I watched it the more I kind of liked it but the reality is, uh, is when I make a lure when I decide to design a lure it's because I have an image in my mind of what it's gonna look like and how it's gonna act and when that doesn't quite fit the reality on the ground or in the water uh, I've got to make an attempt to to make it work the way I thought it would work it's the kind of challenge I actually really enjoy it's the part of lure making that really uh, gets my juices flowing I really like trying to figure out the physics and make some modifications that will actually get me where I want to go. So I had a question on the hook weights, and that's these little simulation weights that I use right here. Um, they're there just simply to simulate the amount of weight that hook is gonna apply. Now the question was, do they really um, simulate the hooks in that they don't have the same level of drag? Uh, and that's true, uh, they don't have as much drag but over the course of doing this for you know years and years I have realized that the added drag of, a, of the hook isn't enough to make a difference and this is much safer. I don't like using hooks because I have lost lures that were just prototypes and I have had big pickerel come up and smash it and just pull it apart or at least pull one of the segments off. I had a subscriber say you can calculate all you want but physics will always win and that is rock on and he also said why would the front sections move if the tail is willing to do all the work and that sounds kind of like a joke but it isn't actually dynamically water flows across the body it begins to become very turbulent uh, after the head and that turbulence is essentially a bunch of vortices each vortex is looking for the lowest energy path to get out of there and that is going to be these easily moving lighter smaller segments on the body the first experiment we're going to do is to try to make it more difficult to move the tail section and that might go against what uh, sort of you intuit but i think if we can limit this motion we might be able to uh, get these segments to move more readily so we got to figure out a way to make this drag a little more i don't want to add friction so I got an idea, check these out. Okay, these are dressed hooks. I, I did this work myself and I have to laugh because they're kind of elaborate. This one looks like I killed a parakeet. I don't know what I was thinking, but they are certainly going to be very draggy. So I'm thinking I'm gonna take the most elaborate one, even though it's only a number four hook, and I'm gonna attach it to the back of that lure and we're gonna see how it does. Let's go down to the dock and try it. Okay, we're down at the dock and I've got that dressed hook on there. So I need one more thing and that's a fishing rod. I forgot to bring one. So I'm gonna run back to the house and get it. Stick around. Ah, all right, let's take this thing off. Let me mount that camera where you can see the water and we'll get going. The tail section is definitely moving a lot less.
you can clearly see that that tail is not moving uh, with the kind of energy it was moving with before and it definitely is getting a lot of movement on the third piece but the piece right behind the head just isn't moving all right so what we've learned is that an added drag will slow this down but apparently not enough to get over whatever keeping this from moving so the next step is to work on the friction let's go back to the shop and open up these slots just a little wider and see if we can get this thing moving okay so now I'm just gonna have to dismantle the front section and do a little bit of sanding I think all the slots on this on this second piece are gonna need uh, some sanding and there you go okay it's time to start sanding I won't bore you with a bunch of sandpaper video uh, so I'll get back to you right when I'm putting it back together Okay, so just to let you know what I've done, I've taken a small little mini micro file and just worked the, these slots. And I also cut them a little deeper with this old hacksaw blade. Basically, it's two of them glued together just so I have the thickness. What I'm looking for is this behavior. You can see how these hinge plates flop all the way over 180 degrees or a little more. So let's reassemble. Gonna have to glue as I go along here. Okay, it's assembled and I'm getting this really, this weird full range of motion, right? That we were expecting. And that feels more like it has less friction. So hopefully that makes a difference. But because I know that this dressed uh, treble hook made a difference, it actually Quieted down the tail and did push the movement to that next uh, segment forward. I'm going to bring two. <laughs> if one is good, two is better, right? And we'll try an experiment to see if two of them help push it forward. If that's the case, then we can do something permanent that will give us that same result. Maybe a fluke tail. So let's go back down to the dock and give it another shot. Okay, so before I put the uh, dressed hooks on the back of this thing. I'm going to try it this way and see if it's changed at all with the reduced friction. It's barely perceptible, but there's a little more movement starting to wiggle where before it absolutely looked like it was glued together. Okay, that looks ridiculous. Let's try it. I like that movement better. Got a little more shake all the way, even in the head, just a little bit. It isn't exactly what I envisioned. You know what? I can work with that. I'm going to put a tail fluke on it just so I can replicate what these uh, dressed hooks are doing. And then we'll move on from there. So the results are uh, less than optimal, <laughs> but I'm still pretty happy with the way it moves. I am getting a little more movement out of that front piece. This guy seems to wiggle a little bit and every now and then it'll actually come offline and force the head to move a little bit, which tells me we're on the right track, adding drag to the tail and reducing friction in the system. So I'm gonna continue to reduce the friction in these slots. I'm gonna do the head next and then I'm gonna make a fluke for the tail or a tail fin and that's really ironic since I started this whole uh, series of videos showing you what effects different things had uh, on a swim bait and the length and fins and all that stuff and I showed you how a tail fin could reduce the action now it reduces the action on the very back piece but on this one it tends to push the action forward, which gives us a more natural look. So I'm going to make that tail fin and I'll make it out of a thin piece of plastic and then we'll do it again. We'll go back down to the dock 
and give it another shot. So before I start to do a bunch of work on this, let me go ahead and get to a couple more questions. I had a question on whether the twist eye that I use for a hinge pin would actually cause more friction. Now that's a really reasonable question since you have those twisted wires. But in reality, the friction really doesn't increase. Because the stainless steel is smooth and you're not adding any binding, there's only a minor, almost impossible to notice, uh, bit of uh, added friction. It's not enough ever to cause a problem. And I know this because I experimented a lot doing this and I've done it on a lot of my lures. I had another question about those hinge pins and the material I use. And uh, uh, they offered the idea of using a tungsten rod. And that's a good idea. Tungsten's tough. It's a little bit heavy, but that might help sometimes. There's a little bit of an added cost and there's a little bit of an added headache for me because I'd have to find a welding shop to go buy the stuff. I suppose I could order it online, but I don't really see a, uh, too much value in it since I really prefer not to have dissimilar metals between my hinge pin and my hinge plate. Now I do on this, obviously I've got aluminum hinge plates and I've got stainless steel hinge pins and that's really a no-no when it comes to having things in the water because the aluminum will act as an anode to the stainless steel. It will give up electrons and be essentially a sacrificial piece of metal. It'll start to oxidize very quickly. And if you have a boat and you've seen a stainless steel screw in an aluminum uh, tube or something, you've noticed that white dust and it's starting to crumble and pit. So if I wanted this to last a long time, I wouldn't use stainless steel pins. I would use an aluminum tube or an aluminum rod the way I did on that last lure with the single hinge. So those were all really good questions and uh, made me think a little bit. a random piece of plastic for this. I've got the shape more or less how I want it. Let's trace this and then we'll cut it out. All right, a little bit of trimming, and let's throw it in the water. One more time. So here it is, tail fluke and all, and absolutely almost zero friction anywhere. It really just feels very fluid. I'm hoping this improves it enough where it'll be worth it to make a mold. Let's give it a shot. Looks cool, but look what the tail does to it. It actually just kills the motion almost completely. That rear, the rear piece is just tracking. It's just too much of a rudder and I don't get the movement. Let's go ahead and pull it off and see what it looks like without it.
So I do think I got a little better um, movement just from reducing the friction. But realistically, we're back where we pretty much started, which ain't bad. From here, it's just a matter of figuring out how I'm going to finish it and where I'm going to fish this monster. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with you in another week. Keep those questions coming. And if you're enjoying this stuff, subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Thanks.